I sat through it and I felt like I didn't know anything even though I'd taken two years of pre-med courses and yeah, it was kind of, kind of rough. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Suhini and I'm a first year medical student at UCSF and today I'm going to share with you how I scored a 519 on the MCAT. You may have seen my very first video on this channel which was my three month MCAT study schedule. It's absolutely wild to me that now that's reached over 40,000 views and I just so appreciate all the support you all have given me. I didn't share my score in that video because I was still applying to medical school at the time but now I want to be transparent in sharing my score which was a 519 and a 97th percentile at the time that I took it and ultimately my goal is to help you get the best score you can with the time frame and resources that you have available to you. So today is a two-year follow-up to that video and I'm going to share with you all the insights about the MCAT that I've gathered during my first year in medical school. I'll share with you, one, the resources that I use to study, two, my study schedule with a customizable template that I've linked down below and I'll share with you at the end of this video, and three, what I would change if I could go back and do it again. Using what I share with you today, my goal is to help you score as best as you possibly can. But first, I want to mention the sponsor of today's video, Sketchy. If you didn't know, Sketchy is one of the top medical education resources that med students use to solidify their content knowledge during preclinicals. I personally have been using Sketchy since the beginning of med school, and it has totally changed the game for me in terms of memorizing those hard to remember details and facts that I need to know. Sketchy's platform incorporates a memory technique known as the Mind Palace. If you're a visual learner like me, you'll love seeing how Sketchy incorporates colorful, detailed images on their pictures to remember hard to remember concepts, facts, and just standalone details that ultimately you'll have to recall for larger picture clinical questions. As I'll show you in a second, there is pictures and symbols associated with concepts and so when you remember the picture and the individual components of it, you'll also remember the associated knowledge. For example, if you've been studying for the psych socio section on the MCAT, you'll know that there's just so many things to memorize. While the other resources that I mentioned in this video will also definitely help with memorization, here's an example of a video outlining the psychosocial theory of development which includes Erickson's stages of development. I struggle to memorize lists of information like this when I studied for the MCAT, but Sketchy takes you through these cute but also memorable character pictures associated with each of these stages. The infant crib shows toys with a trusting fly and an untrusting fish, indicating that infants aged 0 to 18 months are struggling with a crisis of trust versus mistrust in this theory. Likewise, the teenage frog is showing his ID card as the theory postulates a crisis of identity rule versus confusion during the preteen to teen years of 12 to 18. At the end of the video, Sketchy zooms out to show you the whole picture with each of the components. And when you study, you can actually test yourself using the symbols to practice memory recall of specific facts you'll need to know for the MCAT. It almost feels like a game and it definitely makes learning and memory recall and fact learning much, much more fun. If you like using visual visuals, color, and emotion when you're trying to memorize things like I do, this might be a really great option for you. Here's a run through of the courses offered on Sketchy MCAT right now. I think the videos on system biology and physics are also excellent since these topics are also memorization heavy and unfortunately because the MCAT requires intense memory recall of all the bio concepts and all the physics equations. If you're at all interested in using Sketchy as a resource to study for the MCAT, definitely check them out. You'll almost certainly be using Sketchy as a medical student anyway and this is a really great introduction as a pre-med to a great product that you'll keep using in the future. If you'd like to support me and my channel and also get 10% off any of the Sketchy plans, so that means the MCAT course or the medical one or any of the other courses offered on the website, use my code SKETCHYSH for 10% off. Now let's move on to all of the different resources that I personally use to study for the MCAT. One of the main resources I relied on was a decent set of review books. When I studied for the MCAT in 2019, I used the Kaplan review books that came with a set of seven books. Kaplan honestly was a great resource and I'd recommend it to anyone looking for some content review books. I felt like they had a good amount of information to get the harder questions on the MCAT right, but at the same time it didn't feel too overwhelming with the amount of content they put into the books. I also had access to some of their online material and their practice exams, which I felt were okay in terms of the overall value that I got from them. 
Since then, I've learned about another great MCAT prep company called Prep 101, and they offer a full MCAT prep course. Now, full disclosure, I was sponsored by Prep 101 in the past, and I have a commission link linked down below if you'd like to check them out. I really like their product, and I think it could be a great resource for any of you who might need more externally structured learning during the content review and practice phases of your MCAT studying. If you'd like to hear more about my thoughts and comparisons between the two products in order to figure out what's the right fit for you, check out my previous video on Prep 101 versus Kaplan. Regardless of company though, I think the most important thing is to do your research and find a set of review books that works for you. Ultimately, these books will be your go-to source of information when you're learning the material and going back to review during your practice exams. Okay, so your girl's got some hefty student loans and I really didn't want to spend any more money on MCAT studying than I absolutely needed to. So next, I want to share some online free resources that I would absolutely use again if I were to study for the MCAT once more. For the CARS or the Critical Analysis Reading section, I use this online free site called Jack Weston. I personally really struggled with understanding the AAMC logic of the CARS passages and the questions, and so I needed daily practice and I used Jack Weston. Jack Weston is amazing. They release a practice passage to drill your CARS analysis skills every single day, and their practice question bank goes back super far so you always have other options to practice from as well. I started every morning of my MCAT studying doing the daily Jack Weston passage so I could drill the car's reasoning skills over and over again. I definitely would attribute my car's success to this specific website and I recommend that you try it out as well. Next, I'm sure you've probably used this website in high school or in college in some way, but it wouldn't be a how I studied for the MCAT video without mentioning Khan Academy. They come in clutch for content review for MCAT knowledge. Khan Academy is such an amazing resource as they have written and video information about all of the concepts covered in the MCAT as well as an amazing question bank of practice passages to use. Now I wouldn't recommend replacing your MCAT review books with Khan Academy but rather use it as a supplement to learn new concepts in different ways. However, if you are looking to save costs where you can, Khan Academy definitely covers all of the MCAT concepts that you need to know for the test. It might be a better fit for visual learners or people who like using videos to study, but I would definitely recommend it as a supplement to the review books, not a standalone resource. I personally used Khan Academy religiously to watch videos on topics like physical fluids or the endocrine system as a second pass through those harder materials that I needed to hear a different way. I also loved using their practice passages for the chem phys and bio biochem sections. I personally did not rely heavily on their CARS practice just because I felt like Khan Academy doesn't really capture the AAMC style and I personally think Jack Weston does a better job as a third party resource for that material. During times when I would commute to work, or I'd be chilling at the gym, or I wouldn't be actively studying, I would often listen to the MCAT Basics podcast on Spotify as a form of passive review. This is a great way for me to be productive on my drives to work and still review content from the psychology sociology sections and also the bio biochem sections. I personally think it really helps me to hear people describe and explain concepts in multiple different ways so I really grasp the nuances of a certain concept. However, I would only recommend that you use this material as a second or third pass once you've already done your review books in practice. Now if you're unable to access any of the previously mentioned resources, the one thing that I would encourage you very strongly to have is all of the AAMC official practice material. This includes the question packs, the section banks, and now I believe there's five separate practice exams that you can use. I cannot stress enough how crucial having this specific material was to my success on the real MCAT. No matter how much time you spend studying concepts and doing practice problems, it ultimately only matters how you can apply that knowledge to the AAMC style passages and questions. The MCAT requires a higher level of synthesizing and applying information, not just basic recall. And ultimately, I feel that the official practice material is the only resource that's going to truly capture exactly what you need to do on the actual MCAT. Honestly, I really feel like most of my learning happened in that last month of me drilling the question packs, the section banks, and going over all of the practice exams in detail. Through this, I developed a sense of the AAMC style logic and also honed in on the kinds of questions and concepts I needed to review more. While I do think that the section bank is 
good resource to anticipate the most challenging sorts of materials you might see on the MCAT. I think that the absolute minimum that you need is the sample test and the four practice exams that the AAMC offers. They will hands down be the best preparation you can have for your exam. So I often rave about how Reddit is a really beautiful example of how people can crowdsource information and I feel no differently about the MCAT related content on there. If you go to r slash MCAT, you'll find that there's a ton, a ton of free crowdsourced information and a lot of support and mentorship from people who have already taken the exam. I do go into a lot more detail about the r slash MCAT resources that I've personally used from Reddit in my video titled free MCAT resources. And I also have included a Google Drive folder link down below in case you would like easy access to that. The folder has a ton of informational PDFs that I've used from other MCATers in the past and I used it to really quickly review key concepts and equations before my practice exams and also before my real MCAT. I'd really highly recommend you check it out and also please share it to anybody else you know who's studying for the MCAT too. The more people that know about these resources, the better. Now, those are the main resources that I used to study for the MCAT, but I also feel like my organized study schedule played just as big a role in my eventual success when I took the real MCAT. I've linked my customizable study schedule down below if you'd like to use it as a template for your own study schedule. Now, it is view only, I'm sorry, but some people accidentally edited the original document when they were trying to edit their own schedule. You can make your own copy on your Google Drive folder and then edit from there. So I allowed myself about 12 weeks or three months to hardcore study for the MCAT. The first two months were dedicated to just content review. I would get to the library around 10 a.m. each morning and do four to five hours of really dedicated studying and I'd leave around 2 or 3 p.m. each day. In this four to five hour block, I had no phone and no distractions, so it allowed me to really dig deep into the chapters that I had scheduled for myself that day, do some practice problems, and really, really marinate all the information that was in that specific chapter. And since I left at 2 or 3 p.m. each day, I still had a ton of the day left over to really enjoy summer, hang out with friends and family, and protect myself from feeling too burnt out. You'll see that I took the AAMC sample test my very first day of MCAT studying. And I did this because I really wanted to understand what I was getting myself into. I sat through it and I felt like I didn't know anything even though I'd taken two years of pre-med courses. And yeah, it was, I mean, it was like eight hours long. I had no phone, I had one little tiny 30 minute lunch break. And yeah, it was kind of, kind of rough, but I sat through it and it really allowed me to center myself and prepare for all of the grind and dedication and hard work that I knew it was gonna take for me to ultimately be able to sit down and be like, yeah, this is something that I can totally do. I'd recommend that you take a practice exam within the first few weeks of your studying, just to see where you're at and really understand what you're getting yourself into and also what goals you should be aiming for. The third and last month of my study schedule was definitely more of a grind. I arrived at the library around 7.30 to 7.45 a.m. each morning and I was fully ready to start my practice exam at 8 a.m. each morning. The intention was to take my practice exams exactly the same as I would take my real exam. Now I know that COVID has definitely changed a lot of the durations of the exams and also the starting times it seems like, but I do think it's still a good plan to try and simulate your test conditions as much as possible when you take these practice exams. That means no phone, that means no distractions. I even was neurotic enough to literally pack the same lunch every time I took a practice exam and the same lunch for the MCAT. Then after spending a day on the practice exam, I'd spend the next one to two days going through every single question. Yes, every single question is a question that I would review. I genuinely found this to be one of the greatest sources of learning for me. Even if I got a question right, I may have gotten that question right because I guessed or my logic was off but I somehow arrived at the right conclusion and I wanted to make sure that I understood what logic I was supposed to follow and what knowledge I was supposed to have in order to really accurately answer that question properly. And then of course, for the questions that I got wrong, I would redo the whole problem, look up concepts that I didn't know, and truly try to understand from the passage where I was able to pull the information I needed to finally get the right answer. I have another video on how I reviewed my practice exams if you'd like to check that out. And I would definitely encourage that you spend the appropriate amount of time really going through and honing each of the questions that you missed or got right on your practice exams. Personally, I used the Kaplan practice exams earlier in my practice exam grind and saved the AAMC official practice material for later closer to my test. 
please don't feel discouraged if you're feeling like you're not scoring where you want to be with the third party tests because there is a tiny bit of score deflation that happens among third party resources. You should see a relative increase in your scores once you move on to the AAMC material. People often say that you'll probably score on your real MCAT in the average of your full length practice exams from the AAMC. And that held true for me. I scored a 516, 517, and 521 on my three practice exams. And then I ended up scoring a 519, so around the average of a 518 on my real MCAT. You'll see on my schedule that I also have this custom exams listed on there. And this was a really cool way for me to integrate the question packs and section banks into exam like practice. All the credit for this idea goes to the Med Bros and Car Beauty channels. I just copied their idea when I was practicing myself. But if you do have access to the question packs and section banks, it's a really good idea to pull out a few questions from each of the four sections and just drill more practice in the way that you would on a real practice exam. I found the custom exams to be really helpful in not only practicing more, but also in building up my endurance. I was really grinding with like eight hour tests every two or three days and I personally feel like that's what I needed to do in order to really build up to my final test. Now I often think about what I would go back and change if I could study for the MCAT again. I feel like I've come up with three definite things that I would change. One, I would 100% add more break days in my first two months of content review. I personally feel like covering all of that content in about two months is very doable. I wish I had given myself a long weekend here or there, or a few more days off for my birthday. Um, I really think that would have protected me even more from feeling burnt out during those first two months. Second, if I could go back and do my exam review again, I would definitely try to keep some sort of digitalized version of my notes. If you look at my video in the past, I literally have like packets, like stacks of just paper where I've written everything down. I wish I'd kept some sort of online note version of that so I could really easily control F concept and then see what notes I'd taken from the practice exams. Third, last but not least, I wouldn't place as much importance on the scores that I got from my third party practice exam scores. I know when I was studying for the MCAT, I really psyched myself out with the Kaplan practice exam scores because they were a little bit lower than the range that I was hoping to score in. And I finally realized that they don't really accurately reflect the AAMC style. My score bumped up like five or six points right when I started taking the AAMC tests anyway. So don't get discouraged if that's something that you're noticing as well during your studying. I do want to mention one more resource before I end, and that's if any of the resources that I mentioned don't feel financially feasible for you to access, please check out the AAMC Fee Assistance Program. If you're eligible, you'll qualify for a reduced price on your MCAT registration and also reduced prices on all of the AAMC official practice material. And of course, you can always find an assortment of free resources on my channel, YouTube in general, Reddit, and beyond. Please reach out if you have any questions about any of that. So there you have it. That's how I scored a 519 on my MCAT. In all honesty, the MCAT score you get does not reflect on how good of a physician you're gonna end up being, and really nobody cares about your MCAT score once you're in that school anyway. However, I recognize that it's an important obstacle for pre-meds to overcome in their journey to medical school, and I really hope that sharing all of the resources that I use to study will help you in your journey as well. I hope this was helpful, and please know that I'm rooting for all of you studying right now, or any of you studying in the future, maybe the summer. I am here to answer any questions that you have in the comments down below, or if you'd like to DM me on Instagram, you can follow me there and send me any of your questions there as well. Um, I'm also accessible by email and all of those links are down below. Please, if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this, it really helps boost my channel in the YouTube algorithm and reach more of you that are looking for resources and guidance in this path. I just ask that you share this video to anyone else if you find it helpful. All right, sending love. I will see you all very soon.